The Browning Buckmark. Let's check it out. Browning has a reputation for making really excellent firearms. Uh, whether it's their handguns, their shotguns, or their rifles, Browning has always been one of the top gun manufacturers in the U.S. One of the guns, though, that I've really wanted for a long time is the Buckmark. It's been on my list, and I've just never seemed to have been able to get around to picking one up. Recently, I got in touch with Gun Pro Deals. Nate was asking me what was I looking to review and I already had this one on my list, the Browning Buckmark. And ever since 1985, when it was introduced to replace the Challenger, which is an excellent handgun, this is one of the top rimfire handguns on the market. Probably sales-wise, the Ruger Mark series has been bigger. But as far as quality, the Browning Buckmark is the one to go with. All right, guys, we've got the Browning Buckmark. This has been on my list for a long time. Uh, I love Browning, any of their firearms. They make really high-quality arms. Uh, and the Browning High Power has been one of my favorites for a long time. Uh, but, you know, for 22, the Browning Buckmark has a huge reputation for being not only accurate and well-made, but also with a really nice trigger, very reliable and easy to disassemble, which is completely different than the standard Ruger uh, Mark series. Of course, they've improved that over the past few years, but you know, I really love the looks and the feel of the Browning Buckmark. Just getting the 22 out and shooting it is just so much fun, it's so accurate, it's so easy to shoot. Low report, low recoil, and, uh, and cheap to shoot, and so that's a lot of fun. But uh, this is one of their UDX models with the wood grips and with the finger grooves. But guys, there are over 20 different current Browning Buckmark models. There's the Buckmark Light, there's Targets, there's Hunters, there's Trail Lights, there, I mean, the Camper. I mean, there's so many different configurations. Uh, this is with the five and a half inch barrel. And of course, they have all different size barrels. Most of their barrels, though, are in the bull barrel. And this is a steel barrel. They do now have aluminum barrels with a uh, metal uh, sleeve inside. Just a lot of different configurations because there are so many different people that like to shoot 22 for a number of different things. Uh, now, first thing we're going to do is make sure the gun is unloaded. So we're going to drop the magazine. It does come with a 10-round magazine. These are heat-treated. They have a coil spring that runs up through the front, so it makes it very consistent. One of the things, too, I like about this spring is it doesn't kill your thumb when you're bringing it down, uh, unlike the Ruger Mark series. Um, we're going to go ahead and check to make sure the gun is unloaded, and, of course, the chamber is clear. The only thing, really, personally, I can tell you right up front, that I don't like about this pistol is the magazine disconnect. <laughs> so if you don't have the magazine, you can't shoot the pistol. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and reinsert the magazine. The uh, wood grips on here are beautiful, but they also have laminate grips. They have uh, composite grips, rubberized grips, tons of different options. And again, that's one of the cool things. Also, there's a lot of aftermarket support for these. Obviously, the Browning Buckmark has been around for a long time. They stopped making the Browning Challenger in 1985, and uh, this has really been a very popular handgun for Browning. Again, it is in 22 long rifle, 10 round magazine. One of the things, too, that I love about the Browning is that it's made from 70, 75 T6 aluminum, which is the frame, and it's been milled, machined uh, from a solid piece of aluminum. Most of your other 22s that are comparable to this are, are either polymer or they have investment casting 
for their receivers. But with the Browning, it's just a very finely finished handgun. Now, while the frame is aluminum, the slide is steel. Uh, and of course, with the barrel, it's definitely steel. It does feature a crown barrel and a hand ream chamber. Uh, which really leads to good accuracy. One of the big changes that they made with the buckmark over the Challenger was this recessed area right here with the serrations. Uh, and then they had these cocking ears at the back. So it makes it really easy to be able to grab and to pull that back. And uh, of course, if you want to grab it here, it's a little more difficult with the slide on top, but still you can get a hold of it pretty simply. Um, it's a very smooth action. Uh, this one does have the flat sides or the flat slabs, and it has a kind of a slight polish to it, blued polish. And then, of course, all the other areas had that matte finish to it. Um, the sights on here are excellent. And these are standard sights for all the different Buckmark models. But it has the uh, adjustable rear sight, and this is fully adjustable. And at the front, we have a True Glow fiber optic sight. And this is really bright. Now, I think on some of the models, the front sight's just standard black sight. The controls are pretty simple. Manual safety, bring it down for fire. Uh, it's a little stiff going up at first, but um, it seems to be working itself out very easily. Also, you have your slide stop right here. And if we bring our slide back, of course, we have the magazine in it, so it's going to hold it already. But um, drop it and uh, goes right home. The magazine release button is recessed and it is uh, serrated and the magazines pop out pretty easily. In fact, they fly out. <laughs> now, as far as the magazine release switching to the other side, I don't know that it will. And of course, your controls are all on the left side, which is for right-handed shooters. So it's not an ambidextrous pistol. It has a very high grip and uh, you can have the undercut right here, which brings your hand up. And then of course, right here at the back and it has a very nice low bore axis. But the wood grips, I mean, they are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and these are walnut grips. Again, they do have a number of different types and it does have a finger groove molded into the frame itself. Now, one of the things that was a little surprising is it only comes with one magazine. And I believe extra magazines run about the close to $30 range. So that is one thing, and I would pro I would highly recommend getting a couple of extra magazines uh, for your pistol. Now let's check the trigger pull in the pistol. We're going to put in a dummy round. Uh, dry firing rim fire is not the, you know really to be done in excess. Drop it in. Let's look at the action of the trigger first. A little bit of take up. And then a nice snap. Man, that is nice. Reset. Right there. A little bit weak, but you can definitely, it's a little more tactile than it is audible. There we go. Oh, that's a really nice trigger. Let's check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge. These are available at Brownells. Three pounds, 13 ounces. Let's check that again. Three pounds, 11 ounces. <laughs> this is about three pounds and three quarter ounces. And uh, that's just nice. Very nice trigger. And I want to thank CCI for sending the 22 mini mags. We're going to test it out and see how well she shoots. Mini mags are my favorite rounds. They're just, they just function when a lot of others won't. Guys, I'm going to tell you, I have never fired a Browning Buckmark. I mean, that's crazy. I've shot a lot of guns, but this is one gun that was on my bucket list. And so I was really excited about getting it to the range. Uh, first off, that grip, it is just so moldable. I mean, it fits so well in the hand. Now, that has to do with these finger grooves, but that's not on every Buckmark. But I'll tell you guys, if you have a choice, uh, I think that it just seems to nestle really <laughs> in your hand uh, and it rides up really high it's just easy to get on target easy to shoot of course the sights really help uh, with the wide back i mean you've got a really solid rear sight and then that fiber optic at the front uh, is just excellent now as far as reliability we didn't have one hang up not anything 
Uh, it just fed. The only thing that I had a problem with is about after shooting it about five rounds, first couple of times, there seemed to be some hesitation and it was probably just me. I don't know what it was, but I seemed to kind of stop for a second and then went on shooting. It wasn't anything to do with the gun. Uh, and after that, you know, I didn't have any trouble. And, and really that wasn't trouble. I think really it was just me getting used to that trigger. Uh, the uh, smooth action, uh, of course, there's hardly any recoil with 22 long rifle. I really love getting 22 long rifle out to the range. Uh, the low report, uh, the you know, just the less recoil, and of course, the ammunition cost is definitely great. When I went through my accuracy test, though, I kind of rushed through it. Uh, it was just on target, and I just shot. This gun will do really superior accuracy, much better than I was able to demonstrate, but also just a very accurate handgun, and they're known for that. Now, cleaning recommendations from Browning as far as when you first get the pistol, there are some uh, protective coatings that are on here that you really need to remove, and uh, you know, running a bore brush through, just taking a little bit of an oily rag with very light oil, uh, the breech face, just kind of cleaning it up, uh, and so it's a very simple process, mainly with a nylon brush and, of course, going through the muzzle end. Now, Browning recommends that you do not take off the slide and all these parts, but we're going to do that just so you can see what takes place. And for a lot of you guys who are going to necessarily be changing out things, this will help you just to see how it goes. Now to disassemble the pistol, we're going to remove the magazine and check to make sure the gun is empty. You want to remove this top piece, this, this sight mount. And it's just a little Allen wrench that you need, so go ahead and pop that off. It's in there pretty tight at first. Now one thing you'll want to do is to be careful uh, when reassembling to make sure you put a little bit of thread locker right here because these do have a tendency to break off if you're not careful. Now with the top cover removed, we're going to bring the slide back just a little bit and we're going to lift up. And then take your firing pin control and just hold on to it and just kind of lift it out. It takes a little bit of finagling, but here it comes. Now there's a buffer back here and you want to be careful that'll fall out. And then we can just remove the slide, we'll remove the buffer pad, and we're good to go. Now again, Browning recommends that you do not actually take it apart this far. Uh, in fact, take it to a local gunsmith. But I thought I would just show how to disassemble this because if you're going to do any other work like replacing the barrel, things like that, you're going to need to be able to do this as well. To reassemble, we're going to bring our slide. We're going to place it on to the frame. Now I'm going to place my buffer pad against this little back mount and there's a small little hole that corresponds with the hole in the pad and it will be on this side of the little buffer pad. And then we just bring it back and set it down into that little cavity. It'll just place down in there. And now you're back in business. I think one of the reasons why Browning says not to disassemble it this far is to make sure that this stays in place over that barrel. And again, guys, you wanna make sure you put a little bit of Loctite right here if you ever disassemble this far. Now we're gonna add just a little bit of blue th thread locker to the screws. Go ahead and set your top mounting plate into place and put in your locking washers. The short screw goes up front. Make sure that it's nice and tight but not too tight. You don't want to over tighten that screw. And then the longer screw here in the back. Now insert your magazine to defeat the magazine safety. Bring back the slide and we're good to go. As far as price goes, there's a lot of variation. Uh, I did see it up to $469 on one website, but on GunProDeals.com they have this for $399. As far as pros and cons of the pistol, I mean, the quality is fantastic. The receiver being a CNC milled receiver, you, you feel the quality, you can see the quality in it. Uh, even though it's 22 long rifle, it definitely has just a, this is an heirloom type handgun in my opinion. Uh, in fact, when I brought it in for my wife, she was like, what is that? <laughs> and that takes a lot for my, my wife. She sees a lot of guns. But uh, the, uh, I like the flat sides, and of course, if you go with the standard bull barrels, you know, you have that weight on the end, which makes it nice. The balance of this handgun is, is exceptional. 
of course you know you can put the four inch barrel or the other barrels and that's one of the things about this handgun as well is barrels are fairly easy to switch out uh, this pistol has a really high reputation for being not only accurate but also reliable and it proved it for me now one con would be that browning recommends not to disassemble this firearm and that's kind of strange uh, I like to see what the gun's about. I like to get in there and clean it out, especially 22 long rifle. And of course, we disassembled it. It wasn't a big deal. I think if you're not careful and you're disassembling it a lot, you can wear the parts out. And um, that's a possibility. But everything looked really solid in the handgun. Really, to me, the biggest con with this pistol is that it only comes with one 10 round magazine. So other than that, I think that this is a fantastic choice if you're looking for a 22 long rifle pistol, you know, whether just to go out to the range and plink or whether you're a, a, you know, like to shoot targets uh, or even as a hunting pistol. As I said, there are over 20 different models currently on the Browning website. And then you can look at the discontinued models and there's 20 more there. So they're always coming out with some pretty neat designs. So the only thing I could say is that if you see a model that you really like, you may want to jump on it before it's discontinued. In fact, I think that this one is discontinued. So overall, it's an excellent handgun. One thing I do want to say, which I've seen lately in the comments is, again, people saying, well, you know, yeah, Such likes it, you know, already, I can tell you already likes it. Listen, guys, I don't review guns that I don't like. I don't review guns that are poor quality or that have a bad reputation because I really just don't have time for it. Uh, there's so many guns out on the market that I could never review all the guns if I put out a video three times a week. If there's something that's wrong with a gun or something that I'm having problems with, I'm definitely going to let you know because a lot of people buy my recommendation and I take that very seriously. With that said, go check out other reviews of the Browning Buckmark and see what they have to say. Uh, I think you'll find, though, that this pistol has a really good reputation, and uh, it's just an excellent handgun. And I want to thank GunProDeals.com for sending this pistol for the test and evaluation and their sponsorship of the channel. It's just a great way to be able to get nice handguns to bring to you guys where I can really pick and choose and not beholden to any kind of manufacturer. One thing about it is, I, of course, always have the option to buy it. and. Um, I've already bought it. <laughs> I'll just tell you right now. It's just an excellent handgun. Check out Gun Pro Deals, though. They have some really great prices, some of the best prices online. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Browning makes high quality fire. Browning makes high quality fire. From Gun Pro Deals got in touch. He said, "Hey, you know, okay, what did he say? He said some kind of." And I said, "I'll take the Browning because this is the cool, this is the cool stuff. I think it's just fantastic." Now again, guys, this is now again Brown it. Now again Brown it. Okay. Now again Brown them. Browning. Definitely, I would take a look at this. I don't care about all that crap. You don't care about that crap either.